Mary Parker crazy completely for the death of Kelsey Bears. Mother of five is still missing. Savannah Spurlock is missing after a night out at the other bar. It's time to start caring. Welcome to Talking News. I do it just to make sure that we can get their face out there as many times as we can. Kelsey Bears' body was never found. Right now, I'm in the middle of changing my intros out. Right now, we're using change, Chasing a Murder. But please, guys, subscribe and like right now so you don't forget. And hit that notification bell if you want notifications. So right now, we're going to be going over the new updates for Kelsey Barrett. And let me tell you guys that it is going the way that I expected it to go. And um, I believe that Patrick Frazee is going to take crystal down with him i do believe that uh crystal lee kenny did have more to do with this than she is saying anyways and i'm gonna tell you why in this video so you'll have to listen to it all the way through but uh first i want to say if you're not familiar with this case you're gonna have to go back watch the older videos and uh, learn the story and then come back to this one because we are not going to cover all the details i i covered in the past this is definitely meant for people that are very familiar with the Kelsey Barrett case. So Kelsey Barrett was a young mom pilot that moved to Woodland Park, Colorado, to be closer to her fiance, Patrick Frazee. She was last seen Thanksgiving Day um, of 2018 at the Safeway grocery store shopping with her baby. Little did she know that um, there was a few people planning her death. And fact on affidavits um the names on the i'm sorry let me get this straight so patrick frazy which was a local to the woodland park area um which they called a local cowboy he and his friend slash uh, mistress crystal lee kenny had gotten together on several occasions she had driven from idaho gooden idaho to Woodland Park, Colorado, and met with Patrick Frazee um, starting at the end of October, well, I'm sorry, the end of September through October and even into November. So what was the meetings about? The meetings were to discuss ways to get rid of Kelsey Barrett, Patrick Frazee's fiance and the reason being so is he said that he felt um that she was being abusive to their daughter now i remember when this story come out and the first affidavits showed up on the scene um they had there were several affidavits and let me tell you they do kind of contradict each other it's almost as if they're kind of leading crystal lee kenny to get out of trouble because on one of the first uh well when the police first met with her she totally denied everything but later on she started to talk with police and open up a lot more but when uh, you know they caught on to crystal and patrick frazy because crystal had taken Kelsey Barris phone up to Gooding, Idaho and try to discard of it there and get rid of all the evidence she could. Uh, police located this phone. They had witnesses coming forward um, kind of telling them, you know, look, we already heard that uh, she admitted that she, her friend was going to kill Kelsey Barris beforehand. And she come to us several times talking about this uh, incident that might happen. So the heat did get put on to these two quite hot and heavy. Patrick Frazee seemed to, seemed to handle the heat a lot better than she did. But she ended up giving in and talking. Crystal Lee Kenny explained to police that 
yes, Kelsey Barrett was killed, but she wasn't the one that done it. It was Patrick Frazee and that he called her to come and clean up the mess afterwards. Of course, she gathered and very, um, a bunch of what I call a kill cleanup kit. She had the booty, she had the outfit, she had the bleach, she had gloves, she had everything she needed in order to try to cover up a murder. She drove from Idaho to Woodland Park once again, because she has done this several times already, and went into Kelsey Barrow's townhouse, she said, and cleaned up the horrific mess because it was horrible. There was residue all over the townhome, and she explained to us that this happened while Patrick Frazee and Kelsey Barrow's daughter was just in the other room in a playpen. Then she explained to police, I'm going to skip something for now, I'm going to go kind of back in the past. She told police that she was actually solicited three to four times, and of course that varies as well wherever you read about it, um, to kill Kelsey Barrett. But in some statements, she, she kind of give Patrick Frazee the first idea of how to take Kelsey Barrett out, and that was poisoning Kelsey Barrett's coffee and um, you know and she told Patrick Frazee that she could get what she needed from work with that statement I took it as she's probably done this before she is familiar she was quite confident that she could do it and um, and we've heard these stories where nurses uh, are able to get their hands on these drugs quite easily but if you think about it and this is not being discriminated in any uh, choice but if you were to ask a guy how do how would you prefer to take someone out would you prefer to take them out with poison or or let's say a weapon I can tell you right now a guy's choice is not going to be poison in most cases so I would have to say that I do believe um, the one affidavit that says that she mentioned the poison first I believe that would fit Later on, the affidavits change, and they say uh, Patrick Frazee brought the poison up. And this is why I say this uh, trial is going to be very interesting. I knew it was going to come to the point to where these two were going to end up pointing fingers at each other because one is just as guilty as the other. Now, another thing. You know, she said she tried to attempt to go kill Kelsey Barrett, I think it's two more times, or three more times, because that varies, as I mentioned, but she didn't have the guts to do it, and then one of those times, she actually passed Kelsey Barrett on her way to Patrick Frazee's home. And so, at this point, where Kelsey Bear, um, I'm sorry, uh, Crystal Lee Kenny says she cannot go through with this, supposedly, um, she goes back home and Patrick Frazee tells you, you know what, then I'll just do it myself according to her. That's uh, only her side of the story right now. Next, on Thanksgiving Day, she, she tells us how um, Kelsey Barrett was taken down. And she knows great details Crystal tells investigators that Patrick come up with the idea to do scented candles um, game while he blindfolded Kelsey Barrett. And then this is another clue in my opinion. Now this is an opinion guys for me um, that the candles and blindfold is a woman's idea. It's not a man's idea. She says that Patrick Frazee blindfolds Kelsey Barrett in her townhome, telling her that uh, he wanted her to smell different candles. And from there, he picks up a bat and he just takes her out. He then says, uh, according to Crystal Lee, he calls her. 
whatever. I'm getting high to her and says, you know what, get here now because you got a mess to clean up. And so she does. She witnessed everything about this except for the actual takeout. She is with him when they move Kelsey from one location to another and uh, phone records prove this. Crystal Lee says that she is able, uh, she is there when they take Kelsey to another property in the area and place her in a barn for a period of time before they go back, get her, and take her back to his property where she is put into a trough. Um, they pour and douse gasoline on her she and add wood and of course set it ablaze. She remains there until um, the very end almost where he then scoops the remains from the trough into what she's saying bags now this woman seems to know every single detail except for where she where he took uh, the remains of this mom um, and fiance of Patrick Frazee she tells police that there's two possibilities um, that her, her remains could be and uh, be at and that is a river and the dump police did end up searching those areas and they spent nearly three months searching the dump and they come up with nothing police did confiscate some um, what they think are pieces of her remains from Frazee's property and of course that uh, when they did the test on those uh, very small pieces it was consumptive uh, testing so we don't know how that come out because that's going to be a very important uh, piece of evidence now Crystal Lee does make a deal with investigators that she will be a key witness in this case to testify against Patrick Frazee and put the blame pretty much completely 100% on him. And I don't know about you guys, but I knew from the beginning that Patrick Frazee would not go down without a fight. I more than expected him to stand up and point the finger back at her because I do believe that she played a much larger part in this than she led anyone to believe. Now guys, keep in mind, some of this is my opinion. Some of it is fact. And I'm telling you right now, my opinion is this. I believe that Crystal, if I say the wrong name, excuse me guys, I'm tired. Crystal Lee Kenny is just as guilty as he is. I believe the poisoning was her idea. I believe the scented candles and the blindfold was also her idea. What I'm wondering is they said that she did make an attempt to uh, take Kelsey Barrett out once and she took her coffee but she said she didn't put anything in it. And of course we don't know if that is uh, true or not. I mean maybe she did put something in it and it just wasn't enough to do anything. I hope that they were able to investigate and find out, you know, and ask neighbors, did she look sick, you know, the next few days or call her boss and say, well, does she call out these days? I would think that would be an important uh, piece to this case to find out and see if possibly she was sick um, a few days after her visit. I haven't heard anything on that, but um, Crystal Lee Kenny says no she did not put anything in there whatsoever it just doesn't make sense that she went that far to take her that coffee and didn't go through with anything guys could you imagine you know you're you're sitting in your house and some woman shows up with a coffee just trying to be polite and talk I mean that would be 
very uh, alarming to me. So maybe Kelsey Barrett didn't drink the coffee, you know? Maybe she was polite. Have you ever done that where somebody offers you something and you're like, oh, I don't want to drink that. They might have touched it with their hands or something. And you just kind of play around until you can get uh, away from it and then kind of throw it in the garbage. <clears throat> Excuse me, throw it in the garbage. Yes, I'm just telling you guys, um, something just isn't right with anything she says, in my opinion. But now we're just going to start talking about the, the facts of the matter. And I'm just having to throw this together. This isn't how I wanted to do it. It's just so many cases right now. I'm running out of time. And Kelsey Barrett, uh, this case means a lot to me. I'm wanting to see justice, and I feel like justice isn't being served at all. But then again, this could be, you know, they're not going to tell us they're, what they're doing, you know, what their plans are. Maybe uh, there's a reason why she's not being, um, that she's not being punished right now and not having to face her consequences consequences at this moment maybe they were depending on him to take her down anyways like i said i'm not a whiz at law but i will let's go over the facts what's going on lately with this case so yes they're thinking uh patrick frazee had a time limit he had a date to say whether or not he was gonna um you know suggest somebody else was involved with this case and you know media tried to reach patrick frazee's defense attorney adam um i don't even know how to say that last name but he declined to comment about the late filing and hung up on the reporters but right now media is saying that this is going to be fabricated information so they're fabricating crimes um i just i don't see how they can legally do that so here we are we're not even in trial and professional media journalists now they have laws they have to follow i mean it's just rules that they follow when they cover a story and they're saying that um basically that Patrick Frazee is fabricating stories about Crystal Lee Kinney. That's another red flag for the justice system in that area because what in the world, where are we going here? It's nothing but willing and dealing in the justice system and there's no um, truth to you know innocent until proven guilty there's you're pretty much to me they're saying patrick frazee is guilty and then they're saying that uh crystal lee kenny is innocent and i have i just do not believe this guys i with all my heart and i know a lot of you don't either that um maybe he will fabricate something but you cannot say that it's a fabrication without proof. I mean, we have more than enough proof that Chris Elise says she was involved with this because she said so. So how in the world, if he decides that he's going to um, testify against her, that it's a fabrication? If you ask me, she incriminated herself. But again, like I said, I am not one that is very good with law. And I can tell you right now, a lot of um, a lot of these cases, you know, it's a lot of willing and dealing behind the doors before you even get into the courtroom. But if you heard about that case, um, I can't remember her name, but she was a cheerleader. I don't remember where she was. She was young and she um, she got pregnant, had the baby, didn't tell anybody, and then buried it in her backyard just long story short she was acquitted and i'm gonna tell you right now that a lot of people do not a large percentage of people said no there is no way that she should have been acquitted so a lot of people right now are losing faith in the justice system not only because of these two cases because of many cases 
and a lot of people feel like we're not sending a message out um, to the people that are committing these very serious crimes that there's many consequences. If anything, you're sending out hope that there's a possibility you'll get away with murder. In a way that people can throw blame on people like they're saying that Kenny, this formal, former rodeo queen and nurse, she was a Magic Valley Twin Falls uh, rodeo queen. She's going to be the main witness against Frazy. And according to court documents, Kenny told police that uh, Frazy asked her to kill his fiance multiple times. But like I said, I read in many affidavits, she met with Frazy willingly, volunteering to help kill Kelsey Barris. So I just don't get it. I don't understand how they're able to do this. This is the same woman that said that she left a mess in the townhouse, she said, on purpose for police to find. Yet, she carefully took the phone and disposed of it. She texted it, Kelsey Bell's work, and mother. There was no clues or tips to those guys. All I know is if it wasn't for Kelsey Barris' mother, I don't believe that we would be as far as we are right now, I think. Now that's how I feel after seeing how things went. And I have to say, I do feel right at this moment, I mean, they're not going to come out and tell us they, everything right now. So we'll have to watch uh, court, which is coming up this next month, October, and see where it's going. But right now i just don't have any faith in that justice system that they're using right now so maybe um hopefully justice will be served especially for kelsey barrett and her family i would like to see um crystal lee kenny get a much bigger punishment so let's say that you can prove that she didn't um, kill Kelsey Barrett, but she was um, proven to take part in it. A year to three years, is that justice for her testimony? And is her testimony a lie? Is it just to help herself out, which she seems to do, because why in the world would she help a friend kill his fiance unless there was something in it for her? I mean, you got to think about it. How far did she drive? She drove six to seven hundred miles one way. Right? I mean, several times. I don't know guys but uh, I'm gonna try to do a better video and if I can and go over more details of uh, this case it's just really hard uh, for me to get all this stuff done right now and really I didn't even have notes to go by on this so this probably isn't all that great I can tell you right now that um, I am livid I have been waiting for October to come and it seems like forever. I will have no plans for this trial. This is going to be my number one priority is to see that justice is um, there for Kelsey. All right, guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and end it for now. And, uh, you know, I love you guys and I uh, appreciate everything. I really do. And I will see you guys soon. Good night.